Welcome to the Surviving Business Podcast, where we go beyond the strategy of doing business and explore the mindset of the most successful leaders of today. Here are your hosts, Shane Anderson and Iva Locke. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another podcast called Surviving Business. My name is Shane Anderson, and I'm here with my brother from another mother, Mr. Iva Locke. Uh, we are a really excited here tonight. The reason that we have done this podcast is to obviously give back into society and help everybody that is going through tough times through this really challenging little period that we have here on this little rock that we call the earth. Um, we are really excited to be able to bring to you some business leaders from all around the globe and speak about the topic about how to actually survive business. Now, I am here with my trusted buddy in crime, Mr. Ivor, that I mentioned before. I've worked with Ivor for many years. I actually met Ivor at a uh, Tony Robbins Platinum coaching program. So I became a Platinum partner and Ivor was actually my coach during that period. During that period, I was able to explode my business because this man is an absolute genius. He knows a lot about business. He has built businesses all around the globe. He has, he has had coaching clients on every continent around the planet. And, you know, this gentleman really not only helped me grow my business, but absolutely turn into a state of abundance. I speak very highly of this man because I absolutely love him like a brother. And I'm very happy to have him on the call here again tonight. Mr. Ivor Locke, how are you, sir? Amazing, my friend. Amazing, amazing. Uh, very kind words. Thank you very much, Shane. And, uh, you know, when Shane came to me, you was such an amazing, uh, you're so, you know, effervescent. You were so excited. I mean, I remember... He came back from a, a business mastery uh, program and, and uh, he said, Ivor, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? And uh, I said to him, well, we're going to do this. And I gave it to him. And he was one of those people that, you know, he was an A student or, or a person that just wanted to, to excel in everything that he did. This man was one of those. We took uh, his panel beating business at the time from one shop to 26 across the nation and it was just such an amazing opportunity. We did that in nine months. It was a phenomenal growth. And uh, of course, a whole lot of uh, strings of things that we've been doing um, uh, in the background. Uh, I've seen this man stand on stage multiple times and I've seen him progress uh, as well. I mean, you know, one of the things I remember with, with Shane was that he was scared of doing public speaking, ultimately. You know, and uh, and he's going, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. And and look at him now. He's now sitting across me and, and, and being one of my co-hosts as well. You can't shut me up now. And no, you, can't you definitely up. can't shut you up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, so everything is possible in this world. Um, you know, uh, even from my background, uh, you know, I came from uh, humble upbringings. And, um, you know, I was the shy guy standing in the corner. So... You know, what we're doing at the moment is truly a hard space at the moment because everybody right now, we need to change the narrative of where everybody's at because it might not be impacting you right now, but in the next couple of weeks, as we get deeper and deeper and deeper into this lockdown, I think people's mindset will basically shift a little bit more. So what I want to do at the moment is really, really ensure that we're actually shaping your mind and growing your mind so that you can make it strong. we get more locked down that we can actually thrive even during this time. So, uh, you know, uh, I have uh, somebody really special on the, on the call at the moment. You've probably seen, seen her. We, we've done a bit of a bio of her and, um, you know, Julie is a, is an amazing, amazing human being. She's incredibly funny. I mean, you know, just having a, a conversation just before we got online and, you know, she's, she's so, so energized, so energized. Uh, as well. And, uh, you know, she's led over 60 expeditions across, across the globe in Arctic and Ar Antarctica, you know, high altitude mountains, Middle East, Africa, Asia, Europe, cross-cultural and cross-generational teams, you know, and I mean, the knowledge that this, that Julia has, you cannot pick up from not doing anything. So I really want to uh, acknowledge her for giving up her time. But more importantly, I want to really get you guys to really pay attention to what she has to say. You don't get to do what she does by accident. You get to by absolutely committing to something and making sure that you master it. So, Julie, I, I'd really want to, uh, you know, uh, again, acknowledge you and, and, and just bring you on board and, 
and say thank you so much for for giving up your your precious time to be on to be with us today. I'm super delighted to be here. Um, I will start my video. Let's say start my video. There we go. <laughs> Salam alaikum, mahaba from Abu Dhabi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm loving this. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's um, 12 noon in the afternoon here, so we're, we're halfway through the day. Um, so it's a great time for me. Actually, this is my what a great way to spend my lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Collecting around the globe. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. You bet. And and look, we have a lot of people that are coming on here tonight. And uh, obviously, we are live on Facebook in a couple of groups here tonight, too. So we'll be out fielding questions from everybody. And, you know, what we like to ask all of our guests on here is how to survive business. Now, in your current climate, where you are at the moment, you're over in, in Dubai, um, in Abu Dhabi. So yep. what I would like to ask you, how is the situation there and how are you currently surviving business? Great question. And uh, just today, uh, we started a two week lockdown and mm. just today, Emirates and Etihad have canceled all their flights. Um, so really now we've been very much encouraged. Um, well, advice to stay at home uh, and, I, and I think when in the when in the time do you get you know stay at home and to go inwards you know that there are gifts in this time period and there are challenges and then you know as a, a resilient optimist I choose to look at all the gifts and I think that's important so by connecting people around the globe as we're doing now it's like how can I make the most of this time that I've been given as a gift and obviously it depends whether you're a solopreneur, you're a, a business owner, whether you've got kids and you're now homeschooling, um, whether you're with, you know, um, elderly parents. I mean, it's very, very depending on your circumstances, very, very much so. But I do believe that there are some solid steps and rituals and habits and disciplines we can all put in place to make this time period um, really, really um, a time to self-reflect, to be aware, but to also think about, you know, what do I need right now? What do my team, my family, my organization, my community, and what yeah. does the world we like? So it's a great time to assess. So yeah, things are shut down, which means it's the home office and yeah. we have chocolate, we have green <laughs> juice, we have rooibos tea, we have, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> And it's, it's a real, as you say, there's a lot of people out there at the moment that um, are still coming to terms with what's happening um, yes. in the yeah. sense that, uh, they, you know, they seem to almost be going through certain stages. Uh, the first stage is obviously shock, you know, because uh, yeah. we, when we see stuff on the news and we read it in the paper, we expect it to be somewhere else, right? It's, it's always yes. at arm's length. It's, it doesn't invade our personal space. And um, all of a sudden now we're starting to see people realize, well, hang on a second, this is genuinely going to affect me because regardless of the virus, this is going to be a logistical nightmare at this point. Yes. And, and yeah. all of a sudden there's this big mindset shift of, well, hang on a second, that's, this isn't just news anymore. This is genuinely happening in my life. Um, yes. While we see that, uh, there's a lot of people that are going to see this as, you know, they're going to go into uh, almost a state of fear, I suppose, um, or, or scare. And, and as you just mentioned, I believe, and I know you believe, because we, we spoke about this just, pre, uh, just a few minutes ago before we went live, that this could be a real opportunity for people. This could be a genuine gift given to them to be able to explore their inner self and to be really, to be able to go inward and actually genuinely find what's important to them. And and how would you, what, what little piece of advice would you give to somebody that's feeling a little anxious? You know, they're, they're, they're starting to feel their frequency starting to dip and they're going into a little bit of a state of fear or a state of anxious anxiety. But how would you suggest that they not just capture that, but shift that around and turn that into something positive? Yeah, I think right now, obviously, there's this kind of an awareness of how am I feeling right now? Because one minute might feel this, so this will pass, you know, and then you read a piece of news or you see something and then you, you kind of 
you know, the dial moves a little bit more into the to the fear or concern or everything. And it's actually being conscious of that and saying, what's the opposite of this feeling? There's a lovely quote that somebody shared with me, Sam Horn, actually yesterday by John Bon Jovi. And it's, if you can't do what you do, do what you can. Yeah. And, and it's really now a, a time to look at what, what can I do? with this time, you know, mm. how can I, you know, leverage technology? How can I take this time to be a human being instead yeah. of a human doing? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> and then I have, you know, I, I, I'm a mountain climber, so I talk about rocks and mountains all the time. And I have the, the three rocks that I showed you earlier when I first started my business yeah. 17 years ago, and they were anchors for me. So, you know, what am I doing for my mind? You know, reading, listening to music, meditating. What am I doing for my body? You know, exercising, um, uh, feeding it great food and, and moisturizing it. Because, you know, with in Abu Dhabi, we're here with yes. um, <laughs> air conditioning on. Yes. You know, it's like, hmm, I'm drying up, you know, staying yeah. hydrated. And, and what can I do for my spirit? And that's really reconnecting to your values, reconnecting to your strengths and also you know your your family it's yourself it's your family it's your friends and your clients because they're thinking well you know normally we have this product and we have this service we have these meetings so i think everybody on and you know to a certain degree is just thinking what does this actually mean and how can i use this time to the best of my advantage and assess you know opportunity to stay calm and optimistic and yeah. actually um have the courage to change you know because some people are resisting it well you know i'm okay so i'm gonna go out and it's like well it's not about you actually no. um you know it, it's really having now this heightened awareness and and drawing in on those rocks um so i encourage everybody to grab a rock <laughs> that's, a <fabulous>. I, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a fabulous I, idea i love that yeah. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. it's such a simple thing, but I, I think that it's really a uh, powerful way. A few, a couple of years ago, I actually ran an online program. Uh, I was going through a little difficult time in my life and and decided to give back. You know, the, the when you want something, give it away, right? And yes. um, so we created a program called the Wolf Pack, and it, the Wolf was W O L F, stood for Wellness, Oneness, Lifestyle, and Finances, and it was a way oh. for us to to genuinely make sure that we targeted all key areas. And I love the concept behind the three rocks. You know, it, it's it's just a gentle reminder, but it's also, as you mentioned, an anchor to be able to yes. really zero you in to focus on one key area at one time. And you mentioned yeah. that um, you actually uh, did something on LinkedIn where you shifted that again today to three different meanings. Is that right? Yes, I mean, I talk about the power of three all the time, because I think three things, you know, three things I can do today for my mind, three things for my body, three things for my spirit of adventure, three calls I can make, three bits of research. Um, so on, I've done a couple of posts just in the last few days on LinkedIn, just to say the power of three for our um, uh, mental resilience and mental health, because it's a win, 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 is you know connect with your family i mean not all of us are living with our family you know as an expatriate i've got my 95 year old mum in the uk my husband's color col um, oh i changed my teeth currently <laughs> in colorado um yes. and i'm here in abu dhabi um yeah. but thanks to zoom and skype you know we're all connected that way and then friends you know because people are dealing with this differently if you're an introvert or an extrovert you know i think i'm an ambivert you know i can be i'm comfortable with either yes. um and so i really encourage people to to kind of connect with somebody from their family their friends and their clients just to say hi you know this is not a sales call i'm not pitching to you it's just you know how are you um is there anything i can help you with you know and i think this is a time mm -hmm. now really where people are being um, compassionate, more compassionate probably than before. Um, and then the other rocks were your mind, body and spirit. And there's a lovely self-compassion exercise. And it's one I use when people are on expeditions actually, and they're feeling a little bit anxious as we approach the summit or get to mm -hmm. a, you know, um, uh, you know, a rampant part of the river. And it's this kind of here and now rock. And so, you know, I, I really encourage people, if you can't get out and go and sit on a rock or hold a rock in your hand, to take yourself on a mental vacation and, and sit on a rock and just breathe deeply and, and ask the question, what do I need right now? 
you know, mm. maybe you need a hug, maybe you need some dark chocolate, maybe you need a cup of tea, maybe you need uh, to connect with somebody and ask for some advice, you know, how do I use this Zoom thing? Do I need a ring light? You know, how do I, you know, because I think for a lot of yes. people, they're not particularly tech savvy. It's like, now I need help. So this is connecting and collaborating mm. and, and using this time to be creative. So coming back to these rocks, they're a real anchor, you know, and sometimes I, I hold them in my left hand for receiving and just walk around the room thinking, Today, I'd like to have more courage. So these are my courage rocks today. Yeah. You know, simple things. Um, and, and this is an easy, fun thing to do. You know, it doesn't, it just costs you your time and you just need to pay attention. <laughs> That's yeah, all, basically. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. yeah. What does it cost? Oh, you know, you have to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. it's, Julie, it's, it's so amazing that you, you know, you bring in some of what you do in with your expedition guys as well. But, you know, a, a little bit, um, you know, when, when you when you think about resilience and 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 and, and pushing people, and, and I went and walked the Grand Canyon, and the amount of effort, and uh, I remember the guy saying to me, the Grand Canyon is going to be like walking and doing three triathlons, and I'm going, no, it can never be, it can never be, you know, and 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 truly, it was like a little mind blowing experience, and uh, it was was as tough as nails. You know, I've got yeah. some unfinished business with the mountain kind of thing, <laughs> you know, in, in a way. But the thing is, uh, you know, I, I, in that time period, I remember really being able to really find some extra strength and, and, and resilience that, we, that you never had. But talk a little bit more. I mean, you, you've done 60 expeditions. So you've seen a lot of people, you know, go through these expeditions. Well, what's it like? And what, what actually got you in into doing it? I mean, that's, that's interesting as well. Um, I climbed my first mountain when I was 40. So anybody that tells you it's too wow. late. <laughs> wow. You know, oh, wow. And a lot of my friends did, you know, say, oh, we've organized this party. You know, we're going to have bubbly. We've got a stretch limo. And forget it. I'm going to be in Malaysia climbing a mountain. We can oh, have that party when I come back. And um, I literally was on an educational trip and I saw the mountain and, you know, the, the answering the call, you know, the Joseph Campbell, you know, the hero's journey kind of thing. Literally, it was just it's like a magnet. And I asked our guide at the time, I said, tell me about that mountain. You know, how long does it take to climb it? When's the best time to come? And he said, oh, spring's a good time. It takes about three days, four days. And I, and I was 39 at the time. And um, yeah, I'd had a quite a shift in my personal circumstances. I'd been widowed at 36, so I didn't really expect that one. Um, and so this was my kind of um, epiphany really, or calling to go and get a higher perspective, you know, mm. to, to see things from a different perspective, basically. So I managed to cajole five of my friends to come with me. And um, we climbed this mountain in 2002. My, uh, 40th birthday, on the top of the mountain, I'm on a mountain, I'm on a natural high. Oh, mountain high, that would be a really cool name for a company that takes other people up mountains and, you know, connecting with cultures and, and you know, getting people out of their comfort zone, but not so comfortable, uncomfortable, that it's like, panic Death. um so the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah no fatal yeah. um yes. I, the, the following year in 2003 i took um a team of 18 women to everest base camp in nepal so i'm going to say namaste oh, wow. to anybody that's been to nepal and that's never ending peace and love nepal that's uh, the acronym Beautiful. um when i came back from that trip i thought this is what i was born to do my background's in sports science but i thought forget the gym the squash and the tennis courts there's mountains forests oceans deserts out there so I created Mountain High then um, and really it was um, my opportunity many many years after my father had given me a globe and we played spin the globe lane to actually you know take people around the globe to have these experiences and Ivor I'm glad you mm -hmm. managed that word experiences because experiences build resilience you know whether they're good experiences bad experiences yeah downright ugly experiences, <laughs> you know, th they shape our character, you know, Absolutely. and I talk about um, glue, um, and I hope this one sticks, um, gather <laughs> lots of unusual experiences, because the more experiences you have, the more resilient you are, the more resilient you are, the more you can handle stress and anxiety, which is, you know, a 21st century phenomenon. Um, so this impact, you know, resilience, Within that word, you know, it's the ability 
to adapt to the environment that you're in. It's the ability to be respond, to stay calm and optimistic, to focus on solutions. Um, there's the word silence in resilience as well, if you look at that. So this is a time to right. zip it. <laughs> you know, yeah. listen and observe and, and go inwards um, and, and manage, you know, the feelings, embrace all of those feelings. So I'm big on experiences, you know, whether that's inward experiences or outward, whether that's internal or external. Um, this is an experience in itself. You know, what are we all learning from this? You know, um, so tapping into your resilience right now and especially adaptive resilience is super important. So how did I get into what I'm doing? I climbed a mountain for my 40th birthday, had an epiphany, thought I want everybody to come and do this, this is wonderful. And really over the last 17 years, I've had those experiences, I've shared stories, which got me into speaking. And then somebody said, Julie, you're so resilient. You know, you've, you've been widowed, you've been blown off a mountain, you've been held at gunpoint in, in the desert during the Gulf crisis when I was in Kuwait. Wow. Um, you know, you've, um, you've uh, run a marathon, you've written a book, which takes a lot of resilience. <laughs> um, and you've had all these wonderful experiences as well, you know, uh, you know. So there's this yin and yang, hot and cold, up and down, black and white kind of thing, that they're all experiences. So I started looking into resilience and then studied it with a group of business psychologists. So that's my mm. kind of main theme along with um, signature strengths. So now's a great time to tap into your strengths. And guess what? My top one is love of learning. So I'm learning how to use technology right now. <laughs> it's, it's like, I can't go wandering in the mountains or rafting down rivers. And it's just like, okay, well, here's my globe. I can take mental vacations and I can connect with people around the globe. So yeah, resilience, <clears throat> strengths and self-care. Yeah, right now, self-care. And we were talking about in, in today's day and age, and, and I can I can just feel the love of Mother Earth coming through you. You know, it's uh, one of those things. And um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, but that you know, just to recap, that that there was a meme that I saw online that it was like it was almost like Mother Earth had sent us all to our rooms to think about what yes. we've done. You know, and yes. and and um, you know, we've all been sent to our rooms for a little while, and it, you know, you get out there and you see the world from these peaks, it must be just truly fascinating and awe-inspiring and, and bring a lot of perspective back to this world that we've seemed to have created recently that is all built of concrete, hustle bustle, microphone, you know, yes. phones yeah. and iPads and and we seem to be connected but more disconnected than ever. And and I, you know, I I I've noticed that when we weren't in quarantine, a lot of people were you know, on their phones and not talking to each other. But now that we're yes. in quarantine, there's people out walking their dogs and, and they're rowing up the rivers and, and they're, they're, they're staying secluded, but they're also going back into nature, which is a, which must be a cool thing for you to see. Yes, I love it. You know, when, when we look at nature's intelligence, when we look at the four seasons, you know, I've seen trees when I go to um, spend time in Colorado, I've seen the trees in different seasons where they've shed all their leaves and they're bare, naked, you know, because mm. the snow's coming and then they're blooming, you know. So I think when we look at nature's intelligence, you know, probably a nice question to ask oneself right now is, um, do I need to be a mountain, you know, standing mm. strong, stable and resilient? Do I need to be a river? flowing you know knowing it's going to greater things i.e the ocean um you know the trees the flexibility you know whether what do they say where the the roots go deepest where the wind blows strongest yeah. um and and you know when i'm i live in abu dhabi and we've got a lot of desert we've got a lot of sand yes. you know um so when i go to the desert when we go out camping and everything i just think this endless you know vast open spaces are really good for the soul and that the, it's um you know, endless opportunities, the sands of time, I call it, you know, that, you know, the heritage. So I do think the world right now, planet Earth is going, <sighs> mm. you know, that, you know, as I mentioned, Etihad and Emirates, the two major airlines here in the UAE, they're, yep. they're grounded for two weeks. Um, as you said, people are out walking, they're not going to the gyms and the yoga classes. So there's not that external, um, yes. you know, um, energy. It's really now it's like, okay, what can I do? um to maintain my energy and how can I, yeah and look at the trees i mean really look at the trees uh for my work this morning i took pictures of the trees and i sent them to a few of my friends and I'm saying look yeah. at the beauty around us and look at nature's intelligence it knows when to you know shed its leaves it knows when to flourish and when to blossom 
Um, yeah, so nature is food and oxygen to me. So yeah, that's why I go out every morning and take my little nature breaks and that kind of thing. It's just, yeah, it's, it's so important. Even just having pictures, you know, if you can't get out, you know, look at pictures. If I look at water, you know, do we need to be a lake right now, still and reflective? Are we mm. a river of resilience? Some people are an ocean of emotions. <laughs> you know, that's a, uh, yeah, yeah, or a waterfall. <laughs> yes. so it's it's sort of this concept of mountains and water as the, the yin and yang. And there's a lovely quote, allows Lao Tzu, stand like mountain, flow like water. Yeah. And that's from thousands of years ago. And how appropriate is it right now? Mm. You know, holding your ground, <laughs> on the rock not the sand as I got totally yeah. mentioned in his life thing yeah. and and then really being very fluid and agile to, to be be water you know mm. um be yes. a lake <laughs> I love it I love it I I, I I see you know it's funny how um we we've taken that a lot of that for granted over over a short period of time it seems like we've been human species have been around for hundreds thousands of years but over the last couple of hundred years we covered everything in concrete and seemed to mm. just disconnect and um yeah. you know I, I i'm finding more and more business owners in particular are taking this time to really connect back into who they are and um yes. you know i think that that's going to be a big thing as we go forward because the world has changed dramatically as we know it i mean we speak about working from home now uh, and there's a lot of business owners out there at the moment that have asked their staff to obviously go home and work from home um, and then the, I suppose the next challenge that we face here is that if they can't survive with their staff at home they will fold and and if they can survive with their staff at home how long until they start to outsource that material and, and we go back into a capitalist world where they start to go, well, okay, well, maybe I could get that cheaper in India or, or somewhere else, um, mm. which, which causes another range of problems in the capitalist mind, right? And, but it also opens people up for opportunity. Well, okay, well, what do we do now? How, do, how does the business work, not yesterday or not a week ago, but how does it work tomorrow yeah. going forward? How would you, sure. um, how, how would you uh, help any sort of business owner navigate to that place of creativity that that these ideas are born from sure. do you have any idea on that i think really it's it's looking at what's now you know what's the current reality um what's the ideal situation uh, what are the what are the options and then what are some ways forward and so for a lot of people you know if they last year were an early or years ago were an early adapter and they had technology that they had teams, you know, Microsoft teams, and they, they can mm. actually operate very nicely. Uh, one of my colleagues did that, invested in that last year and she runs an outsourcing company and everybody's working at home. 42 people are working at home, mm. but they're yeah. all connected. So they're having virtual huddles. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, that's one way, obviously if you're in the service industry, you know, like food, hospitality, re restaurants, uh, gyms, that's, kind of that's a little bit of a different challenge and mm. it's say like, well how can we still stay connected you know the guy the fitness instructor that's on the roof in spain doing a workout and he's got everybody around the neighborhood you know you've got the singers in italy so i think people are finding a way um and and saying what's right now what is potentially next it's assessing opportunities and really thinking what do people need how mm. do they need it when do they need it you know people are looking what's essential right now um, what's critical right now. Um, so I think it's really this adaptive, responsive time instead of knee-jerk time to mm. actually look at it and, and take a mountain perspective, you know, the big yes. picture perspective, because we are all in this together, you know, basically. Um, and, and this is the time now to um, be creative, be innovative um, and adaptive to the new environment and say, how could that look? Um, mm. I'm not going to say when things go back to normal because <laughs> I hope yes. they don't go back to the normal that we had. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's the new world, you know, you know, yeah. um, a new business scenario, a new business landscape where, you know, things are blended, you know, look at the school kids now, you know, they're, they're mm. you know, parents are homeschooling, you know, kids are looking at screens a lot, you know, is that good? Um, 
it's the only thing right now. So I think yes. people are just looking at different ways, whether it's technology, um, singing across the balcony, working out from the rooftop, um, you know, productive change that will help people kind of feel that they're um, still in harmony with what's Connected. happening. So yeah. I think, yeah, I think so it's what's the current reality you know, what's the ideal situation? What are the options? And what are the things, you know, three things that we can do, you know, so connecting with your team if they're working remotely from home now, you know. The other thing that I talked with one of my friends, I said, you know, when you work from home, then, you know, you think, well, I'm not going home because I'm already at home. But then the weekend, you know, we lose the weekend because all of a sudden, you know, every yes. day is pretending like the same. So it's like, okay, Monday to Friday, nine till five, you know, as a solopreneur, I never even, <laughs> since I started my business, you know, 17 years ago, you know, the concept of nine to five and having to be somewhere at a certain place in a certain time is just, you know, and I think that's obviously changing as we go, you know, location independent. So I think yeah. there are lots of great things that are coming out of this because people are having to be more resourceful, you know, because we can't do it the way that we've always done it. You know, we have to think of some new ways now and, and actually get creative. Yeah. And I've and I but we've spoken about this in the past. Um, you know, I, I've I've worked a long a long time from home now, a uh, couple of years. And when you mentioned about the rocks and, and about being anchors too, Julie, um, I have had an ability to actually use different items of clothing. So there's certain things. If I put a watch on, that means yes. that I'm in I'm in business mode. So I go ah. into a business zone, even though I'm in my household and effectively, as we're filming this, I'm in my uh, slash room, lounge room slash podcast room. Um, I know that there's there's different zones in the house that when we walk into different areas that I'm in a different state and I and I will treat that differently like that's my work area so that yeah. it gives me the ability to when I leave that area to then switch back off and go back to being uh, you know the father or the the husband or the the, the partner for the other person because you don't yes. want to be dragged you don't want to be in a position where the same person starts dealing with corporate issues then all of a sudden dealing with the children at the same time because that's where a lot of challenges come through and I know you've got a lot of thought process around that Ivor you have a, uh, some boundaries in place around your office yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, uh, when everybody said we're going virtual, I said, well, I've been virtual for eight years. I said, uh, you know, <laughs> what, what's, what's, well, what's wrong with it, ultimately? I actually find now that everybody's working from home, what are you doing at home, ultimately? You know, what, what are you doing in my space? Because I'm so used to having the whole house to myself, in a way. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it's actually quite interesting because obviously I'm, I'm all set up because I have my own office space and everything else. But I, I have a, you know, I have a door in my office, and when that door's closed, nobody comes in, because when I'm actually um, coaching somebody, I get into flow, and as soon as somebody actually walks past, or even if I see something, it distracts me and it takes me out of flow, in a way. So I actually got a door that I should close. The only time it goes open is 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 when I'm alone at home and I can walk around, or, or if I know that nobody's going to really disturb me in a way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, of course, you know, working the new norm, it's, it's kind of like it's the old norm for me, but it's a new norm for some. But I, I think we'll, we'll embrace technology like we've never embraced it before, number one. And we're going to find new ways to, to use technology and, and appreciate it. it is gonna, I can see that there will be a couple of problems, and Shane, you're quite right. You know, some of the problems will be that, and Julie, you're right that, that the kids are going to be so focused on, on, on looking at the iPad, looking at the screen, that we're actually going to have to actually find a way in how to disconnect them from that as well, in a way. Yeah, I was thinking about PE teachers, you know, what, what are yeah, the kids doing for, for PE and sports? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> so I said you could you could make some fun games like every time you go to the bathroom you have to do five squats or you jog around the kitchen or you know I, I think it's important that we keep moving you know we've talked about you know going inward and meditating but I also think it's important to keep moving yeah. because we can be sat on our tush for a long time looking at a screen directed attention so I think it's important every 
you know, every 90 minutes or whatever to get up, walk around, you know, go to your water cooler in the kitchen, uh, yeah. you know, talk to your dog if you've got one. If you haven't got one, look at all those dogs that are in, um, you know, rescue homes. Now you can go and rescue them and say, well, I'm at home, so you can come home too. Yeah, <laughs> ab- ab- absolutely, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Right. And then there's so, there's so much that we can do at home in this, this the, you know, it's a, as I said, the new norm is going to come through and, and it's, going to be, it's going to change quite a bit. I do want to warn everybody at the moment, do get your questions ready if you do have any questions for Julie at the moment and, and actually just put them into the chat box so we, we know that you've got a couple of questions as well. Um, now, Julie, I, I know that you've obviously, you've done, as I said before, a lot, of, a lot of different expeditions. What's an expedition that you can remember that really was, a, was one of your toughest expeditions and you went, you know something, not personally, maybe you help somebody else or maybe yourself, that you really needed to help them through that space. Well, do, do you, can you remember one of those? I've had several of those, and that's why next <laughs> so Almost every, I, I can almost guarantee no, almost no. every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, I literally um, just 12 days ago came back from uh, chasing the lights. I took a team of people to chase the northern lights. And I think we had the travel angels with us, actually, because everything went to plan. And we actually saw the Northern Lights on the last night. And then my Norwegian friend sent me a WhatsApp message saying, Julie, um, the airport's going to close down on Monday. This is Saturday night. So I had a small group with just eight people. I said, OK, everybody tell me what your flights are, because you may need to change them. So this was Saturday night at dinner. So we just scarpered to chase the lights because somebody called to say they're in the fjord. So we were running down the fjord in way, looking at these lights. Um, we then all changed our flights to the following morning. And a, a guy from Australia, a woman from Atlanta, the rest were from the UAE, all managed to get back home before airport lockdown here wow. and everywhere so that was great so that was one just recent thing um i do remember a challenge <laughs> in 2007 and it was called the jewels of arabia challenge and it was um a kind of a indiana jones type challenge in jordan um and thankfully at that time i was sponsored by land rover so i said i need land rovers we're gonna have teams we're gonna drive we're gonna find clues we're gonna do all of these wild things um, and so Land Rover <laughs> agreed, bless Land Rover, um, to have Land Rovers ready for us in Jordan when we arrived. There was some challenge at the border. And so we were 24 people in Amman, Jordan, waiting for eight Land Rovers. And so oh, we wow. stayed one extra night. And then we were told, no, the border is closed. They're not, you're not going to get the Land Rovers. And it's like, <laughs> okay. So then you think, oh, a car hire company. We could only find four Land Rovers, so the rest have had oh, Mitsubishi. There I think. Oh. <laughs> so, and we were fil- we were filming this, you know. We thought, oh, so wow. just keep the camera on the Land Rovers. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so we drove um, down the King's Highway into uh, Wadi Rum, and we were climbing the highest peak in Jordan, which is about fifteen hundred meters, not a high one. Everything going smoothly, but on the way down, you know, I lead from the back, so I know that everybody else ahead of me is fine. And I just heard this, ah! and I thought, what's going on? And one person had gone over on the ankle, and we're in the wow. middle of Wadi Ram, you know, the, the Lawrence of Arabia desert scenario, and one person's gone over on an ankle. So, <laughs> you know, making my way down, we're deciding what we can do, put a splint on it, you know, we're a team, and they said, get the Land Rover as close as we can. Now we need to drive to the hospital. So we're whizzing oh, wow. through <laughs> Wadi Rum. Um, and the adventure continued because then we went to Petra um, and we were walking through to the sea, you know, which is absolutely beautiful. We had a g- gorgeous day there. We were staying in a, a Bedouin shamanic um, campsite in Amarin. We'd all just sat down to a lovely dinner. We had the men's tents, the ladies' tents, and then the, the men's tent. And then a storm of biblical nature <laughs> disrupted absolutely everything. They're called shamals, like sandstorms. So everything, you know, mattresses and things, the tent flaps were flapping around. So we all just kind of huddled into one tent, there's 24 people. And I remember one of the Emirati guys saying, please don't tell my mum I was in a tent with a load of women. Oh, <laughs> wow. Like, oh, come to one thing, you know, and this is your harem. You know, um, because, you know, cross-cultural, cross-generational, I take into that account. So this storm just lasted all through the night. 
and I can, when I think about it, I can still kind of taste the sand in my teeth because it was just so gritty everywhere. You know, we were we kind of making light of it, going, "Oh, microdermabrasion! You pay a fortune yeah. for this." At the, yeah, you, know? you do. It sounds... <laughs> so Beautiful. this is real adaptive resilience. And then um, you know, so not having the cars, you know, somebody twisting their ankle in the middle of the desert, you know, <laughs> you know, a sandstorm of biblical nature. So we were grounded all night, you know, all huddled in a tent waiting for it to come down um this is where you get creative in terms of um things that you can do yes. um and and thankfully it did get better when we kind of moved towards um uh, the the dead sea it was very calm and we were just all floating there you know with our indiana jones hats and just thinking oh you know yes. <laughs> so these are things you know and then you've had experiences where you just 300 meters away from a summit, for example, in Russia um, a few years ago, and I was with my husband climbing, and um, 55 mile per hour winds coming, you know, and you're digging and you're really thinking 300 meters, you know, we're nearly there, and the guide, you know, looks at you and says, no, we have to go down. Mm. And you know, so there are times when, you know, you listen, because uh, Mother Nature always yeah. has the last say. So I think in essence, these expeditions, it's, you know, you have a plan, and expect the unexpected. And when Mother Nature says, no, <laughs> the that. mountain is closed, then, you know, then then it's over. So I think it's respect for nature is a, is a huge one. Lots, I could tell stories all day, you know, I could, I could I'm a yeah, from England, so I said, I could talk for England, yes, you know. So, <laughs> that's so this great. is what I that's love, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. That's great. You know, and it's it's so amazing because you, you're quite right. You can set up as much plans as you like, but it doesn't mean it's going to go to it. And I always say you don't know what anything is like until you hit the ground, mm -hmm. until you hit the ground, you know, until you take that first action, until you actually make progress and actually go down the path. Like, you know, I love, I love your story because it has all those analogies of where every time you you go down the little bit of the journey, you get down a certain path, and then the next thing you go, no Land Rovers, you know, twisting your <laughs> ankle. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a movie. It's like a movie, like in, in a way. But this yeah. is life. This is life. This is business. This is life. You know, it's, it's got so many similarities, but a lot of the times – I think we, we, we get into our brain that, that that business needs to be vanilla. It's either black yeah. or white, in a way. Mm -hmm. and, and we forget yeah. that actually business is a journey as well, in a way. It needs to be very and, colorful. Yeah, the parallels between business. I think that's, you know, you, you have a business plan and then something happens, like what's happening right now. And then all of a sudden you have to, oh, plan B, plan Z. You know, it, it's really that responsiveness. So yeah, very much agree with what you're saying, Iva. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you. So I, like I've got, um, yeah, with a lot of water, yeah. Um, like I've got, <laughs> got, got, <laughs> yeah, we got uh, Mona that has a, has a question. Uh, Mona, I'm just gonna unmute you so you can ask the question directly of, uh, of, of Julie. So please feel free to ask. Hi, Mona. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Absolutely loving everything. You are so my peep. I've been raised in the Rocky Mountains and have been oh. for many years. Uh, my father's yes. couple of cabins in the mountains. So absolutely mm. absorbing everything you're saying it's fantastic my one thing i asked what what was your greatest adventure and or what was the most memorable do you think like you thought oh that's the one that was the best or you feel that that was the one that really got you to the other side um you know i i've, I've done things on a personal level or with my husband climbing and then i've taken lots of teams and i think one of the most rewarding expeditions was back in 2012 and i took a team of 12 breast cancer survivors to antarctica and i was able to get enough sponsorship to be able to film this so these are women that have gone through this incredible health challenge and said yes to the adventure of being roving ambassadors um, to really share their wisdom with others and to go to the ends of the earth. It's like, who or what would you go to the ends of the earth for? Mm. So I came up with this idea and everybody said, Julie, you're nuts. Nobody will do that. You know, they've already gone through a major challenge. Nobody wants to get on a boat and go across Drake's Passage where you're going to be throwing <laughs> up all the time and all the rest of it. So um, I said, no, I really feel that this is, and I had kind of three messages, you know, it, I was, I was on a plane coming back from Hong Kong at the time to Dubai, and I watched Mr. Popper Penguins on the, on the movie screen. And then 
they came around giving coffee and tea and the biscuits were penguin biscuits. I thought, oh, that's sign number two. And huh. then I, I had a birthday present that was a book, um, Things to Do Now That You're 50. And I kind of do what I do with a lot of books. I just hold it in my hand. What would you like me to know? I opened it and it said, go to Antarctica. I went, ha, oh, there wow. we go. Wow. So, uh, so that was in April and, and we went in November. Um, so week by week, you know, I had more and more people signing up. And we live in Abu Dhabi, sun, sand and sea. I'm taking a team of 12 women to Antarctica. Q ski Dubai. You know, we have an indoor ski slope. So we were kind of doing training there. We did a camp out, you know, because getting fit on a treadmill is very different from walking around with all the clothes on and, and being mm. in the snow and et cetera. So that was such a, a memorable journey because we, we went from the sand to the snow, from hot to cold, to, um, you know, to taking a team of women into a place where a few people have gone and actually filming it and then them being able to share their stories, um, uh, which was great. So we created a book and a film and I'm happy to send you um, a link either to the film because oh, it's a really a lovely documentary to show you the landscape. Nice. So there's now a place called Pink Ribbon Peak. Um, it was just a 200 meter glacier and we just short wrote it up to the top pink ribbons. I'm not a breast cancer survivor, by the way, people ask me, are you a breast cancer survivor? No, but I really um, relate to people that have gone through challenges. And I think, how can, you know, we, we, you know, turn this into a victory, you know, flip this, this mm. victim to, you know, a victory, really. Um, so I think because because I just saw that faces, expressions of transformation of every single woman that came back and then shared the story. So we did present that, that was a super, super special expedition for many reasons, you know, um, because of the landscape. It's like we'd all died and gone to heaven. If anybody gets a chance to go to Antarctica, I mean, just silence, you know. So <clears throat> that was that was one of, one of my favorite ones, yeah. Julie, uh, you know, you speak about obviously uh, some amazing experiences. Uh, there must be, do you have a, a, a set goal planning system or how do you, how do you devise a, an op, you know, a, a walk into the Antarctica or, or along those lines? Do you break it down into chunk sized pieces or are you more of a, a, big a big picture person? How do you actually set goals of such a magnitude and then be able to flow through it with such enthusiasm to go from step by step by step when there's such a long road ahead of you? Sure. Um, a lot of it is kind of intuitive. I just, you know, when I said the mountain called me, I saw it and it's like, that's where I'm going. Um, uh, and yeah, very much a big picture thinker and sometimes rather selfishly. I mean, I have a, a desk cover that's a map. I love maps and globes, by the way. And mm. so, and I'll kind of throw it up and think, Oh, I haven't been there. Like, what can we do there? Uh, you know, oh, South America. Yes, let's go and do the Inca Trail and Urumbaba River and things. So I think, you know, it's, it's, and it's also being very responsive to the market. I mean, I had things planned for this summer and maybe they're not going to go ahead this summer now. Mm. Um, so sometimes it's very selfishly, I'd love to go to Antarctica. I had three messages, so go. And other times it's, you know, I, I used to do a lot of dragon boating. So it's like, where can we go dragon boating? Where can we do a race? You know, I've done yeah. snake boat racing in Kerala, uh, dragon boat racing in Penang, Mays, uh, Malaysia, um, long boat racing in Sarawak. So yeah, the big picture, um, yes. where, what's the best time to go? Um, what training do we need? What clothing, what equipment, you know, what resources basically and then literally putting the word out there you know wild women wanted in borneo you know <laughs> <laughs> any anagens i reckon so i'd get really... a different response to that ad for some reason. <laughs> well i did yeah i did it's amazing you certainly get a lot more opens on the on the, the clip thing yeah i'm like a little wild um <laughs> Yeah, and, and a lot predominantly were women only trips. And then a lot of the guys were saying, this is not fair. I come, you know, my wife comes back, my partner comes back. She's just transformed. I want some of that. So I opened all of my expeditions to men and women. And in fact, the last one uh, to Bhutan, we were 17 women and one guy um, that came with his wife and had a, a great time. So yeah, big picture and then attention to detail. I'm really anal when it comes to detail. I mean, yes. you know, I've got fleeces, I've got, you know, training, first aid, resources, mm -hmm. medical insurance, 
um, you know, what's your country of origin? So we have like flags on the side of the fleece. So sure. we've got the country that we're going to and then their country flag. So I'm very patriotic. I say, when you take your flag, you know, there you are with your picture. I think yes. it's just important to recognize that we're somewhere in this world, um, but we've got connections and that's what's happening right now. You know, I'm here in Abu Dhabi. You've got people in the Rockies, in Australia, in, and I think it's beautiful, you know, that we can share this time and share wild stories and insights. And how do you draw those parallels to business, whether you're, you know, starting a business, mm. running a business, heading up a business, to your life, fighting for your life in hospital, you know, dealing with somebody with Alzheimer's or dealing with kids that are going ape at home, um, uh, or whether you're, you know, climbing that mountain. So there's so many different parallels in business and sports and in life that some of these core strengths are really, you know, the soft skills that people talk about, the soft skills, the resilience is a soft skill. Well, hold on a minute, you know, it's a really strong impact skill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Um, Julie, I've got a, I've got a question from Sumit. Uh, okay. he's, got a, he's got a question. So Sumit, I've unmuted you already, my friend. Uh, you can just ask your question when you're ready. Thanks, Ivor. Hi, guys. Julie, love the energy. Um, I would Thank have. You. Um, Megan was wishing to actually ask the question, but she just got a call. She's been getting called the whole day. People are worried outside this home, not inside. But um, okay. <laughs> um, you almost half answered your question. So my question okay. was: At what stage um, you decided when, when you went when you did your first mountain climbing that all right, you know, people need this, and I want to make a business out of this passion. And um, where were you prior to that? How did you transition? Because, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges a lot of um, future entrepreneurs fa face is that they just don't know if it is just a passion and they should just use it as a hobby or they should take it to the sure. next level and make an ultimate business out of it in a fact that sure. they help the humanity. Sure. I love your name, by the way, Summit. Put another M in there. It's like a mountain <laughs> summit. I always yes, we're that. at the summit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and get that mountain feeling wherever you are, whether you're at sea level or ground level or in a forest. Um, my background summit was in sports science. So um, I was always very active, uh, basically. So looking at the psychology, the sociology, the biomechanics, uh, sports, sports science. So I spent 18 years in the health and fitness industry. Um, and so really it was a kind of almost a natural transition. I mean, the reason I uh, went you know, walk about, went exploring the world. It was part of my own personal journey. Um, I was widowed when I was 36, which I didn't expect. And so that was a lot of time of going inwards. What does this mean? What, you know, now I have this blank canvas. Um, so to go and explore, go on a journey, hero's journey, whatever you want to call it. Um, so then going to that mountaintop and that feeling of, you know, that higher sense, higher purpose, higher perspective, closer to the heavens, just really seeing things and thinking, I want so many more people to feel like this. I want so many more people to explore uh, and connect with different cultures across the world. Because I do believe our disconnection from nature and from other communities and cultures is what's causing stress. Um, so that really was a natural progression. Of course, then you think, well, you know, I've got the rent, I've got X, Y, Z, all the rest of it. Um, but I think fortune favors the brave. And I just thought, well, you know, I could always teach aerobic classes. I can always, you know, so I had a bit of a background strategy and I did actually work three months um, part-time for a golf company because I used to play a bit of golf um, three days a week as I was developing Mountain High. But it got to the point where I was kind of, here and here and I thought this is you know I have to really take this leap of faith and so it was deciding that this is what I'm going to do um, this is my why you know the Simon Sinek start with your why um, and and it just really evolved and grew from there and I think it's what do I need you know I didn't need to have a two-bedroom apartment I, I wasn't married at that time I, I did remarry by the way if anybody wants to know did you marry again I did remarry when I was 45 to a man from Steamboat Springs Colorado uh, <laughs> um, so they're, they're just kind of transitions and, and, and paths and waypoints and I think whenever you're tapping into your values you know your internal GPS or you know the Camino de Sanco they have those um, yellow arrows and I think they're your waypoints this is what I love to do and, and people are enjoying it. I'm seeing the benefits of this. Um, so then looking at different streams, 
okay, the expeditions is really the cherry on the icing on the cake, then, you know, retreats, um, writing, um, speaking, teaching, running programs. So they're pulling in from different areas um, so that you've got different streams of income. So that right now, who would really, lots of people would love to travel, but guess what? They're not traveling, you know, it's not possible. So what, what else can I do? So um, for example, next month, I'm starting a Thriving Through Change virtual program with a lady I met in Boulder last year, who's very big on intuition. So I think it's, really responding to the environment and looking at the skill set, the values, the strengths that you have and say, how can I serve people, um, clients right now, you know, based on the current circumstances? Um, yeah, I, I, I was very, very, yeah, it's a, it's a mixture of fortune, isn't it? And knowing the right people, strong connections. I was very, very lucky because I met a, a woman on the boat that had a travel company. Um, and when I left my job, you know, it was like, I'm going to have to put a, a ton of money down to get a license. But she said, you can, Mountain High can be a division of creative travel solutions. I went, yes, please. <laughs> you know, yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think this, um, you know, that saying your network is your net worth. So it's, it's yes. actually having this um, ecosystem of people around you. Uh, that will support you. And I think as a solopreneur, entrepreneur, it's so important to have those ecosystems, whether they're virtual or like, you know, who can help me with this? Who can, you know, um, give me some advice or make connections or show me how to do this? And I think now more than ever, this is the time, you know, asking for help is a sign of strength, not of weakness. And it's, it's part of this resilience. We, we're not... Um, meant to be able to handle everything on our own you know the self-reliance is one thing but then also having this ecosystem of support um, and I'm happy to be that you know for anybody that's on the call right now that wants to stay connected I'm very very happy to be that because I think it's a win-win you know we're all in different pockets of the globe um, experiencing different things having our up days or you know our, our valley days or plateau days or peak days um, and actually embracing all of them and saying make the most of it does that answer your question summit i think i've just i've just mute i've muted him so that was that was so amazing and absolutely would love to stay connected and um yeah we'll love to share what we are planning to come up with as well but now yeah. this is the yeah. best time i'm so thankful that it is happening <laughs> I, 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 i'm in not in a negative way but in a selfish way that i've got so much time to work on myself and do the stuff that i kind of was ignoring so thank you so yes, much yes exactly these are the oh. things that have been on like my uh, converting my book into an online course was last year and now i'm thinking okay i'm going to convert this room into a studio and make yes. little videos <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. because i have the time i'm not speaking i'm not leading expeditions so this is actually a great time to pull out some of those ideas that you had and there's no excuses now stay connected with you was going to be my next question. Um, whereabouts are you based, Summit? Australia, Melbourne. Australia, good day. Um, but, but literally through, you know, through email, uh, through WhatsApp. I'm sure, Iva, will you be sharing the, those um, connections? I mean, my website is yeah, yeah, absolutely.com. I, I would love to stay uh, connected. Yeah, uh, LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn. You know, all oh, the social yeah, media stuff. Uh... Mm. I'm pretty oh, much I'm... everywhere as well, just on the yes. summit of everything, right? Mm. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take yeah, me we'll to the summit. <laughs> <laughs> We will definitely share all of your connectivity out there as well. Uh, there's one thing as well, uh, Julie, uh, you know, the one thing that we were talking about um, was about finding your strengths and working on your strengths. And I believe so yes. much on working on your strengths. Can you tell, tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, when I was um, doing some online studies through uh, Penn University on resilience, because my background, I'm, I'm from the UK, um, so I studied with a group of business psychologists, and because I've got my husband and, and connections in the States, I thought I need to have something that people recognize in the States, and that's Penn University resilience. And as part of that course, um, uh, via Signature Strengths was part of that, so there's an online profile that you can do, and I shared the link with you, Ivor, so please feel free to share that. It's a free uh, thing, uh, assessment to do. So it looks at 24 character strengths and six virtues. And really now is if you're, if you're aware of your strengths, then you think, how could I use that strength to help me navigate through this challenge? So 
it's a it's a great test to do. I'm I'm looking at mine because I've put them up now on my board to remind myself. And my top signature strength is love of learning, ah, um, mastering Beautiful. new skills, yeah, technology, uh, knowledge, adding to what I know. Number two is kindness. Um, so it's like, yes. how can I be of service right now? Um, humor. You mentioned I'm funny. I think that's quite, <laughs> that's great because that's my strength. Number four. Uh, number three was spirituality, and I'm a great you know. I've been to so many, I've been blessed to be able to go to so many countries around the world, you know, meditating with monks up in Nepal, in Bhutan. And, and really, you know, spirituality to me is about your spirits, you know, your values, your purpose, your meaning, your mission. It's, it, it's nothing to do with religion. It's, it's very, very different spirituality and religion. Um, curiosity. You know, if you've got the, the um, a strength, a signature strength of curiosity, you're going to be finding a way. What else? What else? What else? You know, um, so there are 24 character strengths. They come under six virtues, such as wisdom, um, let me see, wisdom, courage, humanity, justice, transcendence. And if you're aware of those, like your top 10 strengths, this is I th I, signature, it's got the word nature in it, which is why I love it. It's the sign of your nature what comes naturally to you. Oh, this amazing. is something that comes naturally to you that you can tap into at different times. There are the good times and not so good times. Um, so if you're aware of that, it's just a nice anchor to say, how can I use my love of learning right now? How can I be kind, um, curious, um, zesty, um, social intelligence? What do people really need right now? It's, 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 you know, and I think it's a great skill um, uh, to, to, to know your strengths and to tap into those. So I sent you the link of that and it's, it's free. It's via uh, character strengths. If you wanted to go deeper into those, there's a report, which I think is about $20. And that's a choice that you can make, but just knowing those strengths. And I think now a lot of people are thinking, what are my values? You know, one of my top values is health. So it's a really good time now to make sure that you're taking care of your health and your um your energy. <laughs> I love I love those. I love those. I love those. This is um I met this guy in New York actually. He's from uh Colorado, uh, Steve Spangler's energy stick. So you know you make that connection and share that energy. You know, if you're yeah. not connected, there's no energy. So we need one that's 1.5 meters long now, so that we can actually connect. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. So perfect. Well, it's been amazing having you on on the uh, podcast here tonight. I, we're seeing the messages coming through. The love for you is is genuine. There's a uh, there's a lot of messages coming in through different Facebook groups Lovely. saying how much they're enjoying uh, hearing you. Uh, we will definitely be able to post a lot of the information uh, about exactly how to get in contact with you and also the link to yes. check out your strengths i know that i for one will be uh downloading that tonight to to tap into that from myself yes. absolute pleasure to have you on here tonight julie you've been amazing your energy is infectious i uh i feel that um oh, you know, you've watch been how you use that word right now yes. <laughs> 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 contagion yes, yes yes that's right it's um it's a very very new world that we're stepping into and honestly uh you you've just been a, a beacon of light so i really appreciate thank you being on the call here tonight with Namaste. me and Ivor. yes yes thanks thanks so much julie again uh, you know um uh, you know it's so, so wonderful having you here as well and um you know so so grateful so grateful that you can share your your love with the world and, and to give you that stage. And we, we definitely need to stay more connected as well, ultimately Love going to. forward. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, thank you for the opportunity. It's lovely. It's a great way to spend the lunch hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I, I just have one one little announcement before we just complete the, 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 the call. Um, and tomorrow we're going to have a, a very exceptional person on, um, on, on at 7 a.m. or at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, and we both know, know who he is, Julie, um, you know, Jeffrey Hazlett, he's going to be yes. on at 9am tomorrow morning. So, um, you know, this man was the number one business, uh, he ran the number one business show on Bloomberg. Um, you know, he was the creator, the co-creator of, of, of Celebrity Apprentice. Got in 50 businesses. He's the chairman CEO of, of C-Suite Network. Um, he's a, a mentor. Uh, he's a, um, you know, he's a business partner, he's a friend, uh, and 
you know, what's so amazing with it is, is that he's got such a generous heart as well. So yes. I really, you know, uh, if you guys can make it tomorrow, 9 a.m. tomorrow, um, he's going to be here like Julie has been here. Ask him as many questions as you like. And he's actually going to be leading a, a, a little bit of a, of a call with us as, as he's in a circle uh, tomorrow morning before he joins us as well. So uh, it's going to be very powerful. I'm going to come like all lit up. Like, wow, yes. wow, wow, wow. And then, and then, of course, coming to the call. So really don't miss it. If you can make it, make it. And, uh, you know, again, Julie, thank you so much for being here. And, um, absolute and, pleasure. And have is a remarkable... Nine, is, that, is that 9 a.m. Um, Australian, Australian time? Uh, Australian okay. time, yes. Okay, nine, all nine right. I'll work Australian that out time. in my terms. Of, yeah, okay. No, it's been <laughs> my absolute pleasure. And remember this, uh, namaste is a great non-contact greeting because, <laughs> you know, the elbow pumps and the foot kicks and everything else. You just need to say namaste, which is a bow to the divine in you. And that's such a beautiful thing to do. So namaste, everybody. Namaste, namaste. Julie. And namaste, everybody else that's on the call. Thank you very much for participating. And we will see you tomorrow with Jeffrey Hazlett.